Now calories, this is something you need to track because if you need to diet or gain weight, bulk, mass, blast, cruise, whatever the fuck you're doing, you need to know how much you're eating, okay? And what's your The title of this video is gonna be what you need to do before you step on stage for the first time and enter a bodybuilding competition, but I know a lot of people here aren't gonna ever compete, don't plan on competing, but they want to make a huge transformation. So the title of this video is, what do you need to do before you make your big transformation? Well, you need to track things. That's what you need to do. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what you need to track, at least the most important things in my opinion, how, the best frequency, and then what do I do? So we're gonna start with blood work because that's exciting. A lot of you guys viewing are either unenhanced, on the fence about becoming enhanced, or are already enhanced. So how do you get your blood work done? You go to privatemdlabs.com, which is what I do. Merrick Health is one of them. I see there's, uh, they sponsor a lot of different things. Discount Labs, or hey, if you got a physician and he's cool, you can go get blood work done with your physician. Now, the best frequency is four to eight times per year about every quarter. More frequently, if you're changing things a lot, no sooner than every six weeks, because if you do check your blood work too frequently, they're just snapshots. There's gonna be a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense, and that's not important. So it'll freak you out, you won't know what's going on. I've measured my blood work every three days for a little bit, and it's a lot of it's nonsense. You don't need to do that. I measure mine about four times a year, about every three months, unless I'm doing things. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean what I'm putting through my body. It could just be, hey, I lost some weight. Hey, I've increased my cardio. I wanna see if my HDL has gone up. Hey, uh, I've been under a lot of stress lately. Anything can make changes to your blood work. It's important to track it. You might need to know what kind of panels you're gonna get on your blood work. The normal ones for your bloods, you know, are like what, like CBC, your kidneys, your basic metabolic panels those are all really cheap they're under a hundred bucks guys there's no reason why you can't get those done and every one of these sites usually has like permanent discount codes they're like 15 to 20 percent off just go hunt for them okay if you're looking for more specific biomarkers or things like that there's a lot more information on blood work on this channel make sure you subscribe hit the thumbs up button now calories this is something you need to track because if you need to diet or gain weight bulk mass blast cruise whatever the fuck you're doing you need to know how much you're eating, okay, and what you're eating. I use Carbon app. There's also my fitness pal. I would recommend an app. I used to do pencil and paper, but apps are just so much better because you just copy and paste yesterday's uh, menu to today and just save you a ton of time. I, I log it daily. I recommend that you do it daily as well because what you're gonna find is really interesting things where one day you're not that hungry and you still have a thousand calories left to eat. So if you're trying to gain weight, what sense does it make not to eat? It doesn't, especially if you're under your average, all right? Or if you're trying to lose weight and you're way over the average for the day, maybe you should stop eating. So you need to know daily, it'll give you the average over time because really what matters is kind of like your weekly average, not what you do on a day-by-day -day basis. You cannot get those metrics unless you measure daily. Go and ahead. Carbon also has a built-in coaching feature as well. So really this is about establishing a baseline. You need to get baseline blood work to know it's normal before you fuck it up, baseline calories so you need to know about how much you're going to eat because whether you're getting a coach or not for your transformation, you need to know what to change because bodybuilding and transformations are all about change that's, that's really all they're about they're just something changed if you don't know what a change is because you don't know where you're started then you don't know so really you need to know body weight is going to change it's going to move up and down that's going to freak you out that's why you need a good functioning scale and you need to use that scale if you go out of town and travel or weigh on different scales you need to make sure that they're all functioning properly and calibrated, calibrated yeah. right or they're not screwed up because if I have screwed up some scales by trying to weigh heavy weights and heavy things like me with luggage. Hey Ron. Hey Billy. And I've actually screwed up some scales by uh, putting too much weight on them. Do that weekly fasted, unless you're in prep, you're gonna do it more frequently. That's the best frequency. What I do is I just do it every day because it doesn't freak me out to see scale changes, but some people get really upset when they see it fluctuate. Guys, you, you actually do it twice your, a day. You can keep your calories the same, like literally. I can have 5,000 calories a day until eternity and my weight will fluctuate wildly. Including after leg day, right? Oh yeah, after leg day, 
I weigh way more because my body is just sitting there soaked up. Whatever the fuck. I don't know. It could just be water I drink. This is why a lot of people just don't have the mental discipline to understand fluctuations. Once a week is, is probably the best frequency for that. That's what's recommended. Physique. All right. Because body weight does not tell the whole story. In fact, body weight is not the most important metric. That's like saying soreness is the most important metric for gauging whether a training program is, is good or not. All right. It's just a bronze indicator of, you know, what's going on. The same with body weight. It doesn't tell the whole story. But physique, that's important. So what you need to do is you need to start doing check-ins, especially if you're going to be stepping on stage for bodybuilding. Film yourself consistently the same setup. Every single time, nothing changes. Same distance, same lighting, same poses, same everything. Make sure it's good lighting because if you start doing this process consistently with an ugly setup, you're not going to want to share it or be, it's not going to motivate you. So I always film myself over there is what I got here in this gym. Show them. Yeah, that's, that's the mat fort I built. <laughs> I have these mirrors here, but it's a white wall. I put the camera low. I step in front of the lights in the right way. I do it the same way every time. I've been doing it the same way for like three years. And that gives me three years of data to compare against. If you're filming your physique in different places, with different setups, with different senses, different heights, same tripod height, if you're changing that crap around, it's not going to be a good point of comparison. So make sure that's consistent. Make sure you get the setup good to go from the start. Calipers are also a good thing to measure your physique, but since I'm so low in body fat, I don't actually use calipers. A good physique check-in. Weekly is pretty good. I do it less when I'm not concerned with my physique during parts of the year where I'm not focusing on that. But if bodybuilding is my goal, it's weekly or if I'm in prep, it could be every day. Blood pressure, all right, you need to, it's uh, probably one of the best indicators of, uh, in, I think in North America, whether you're probably gonna die soon or not. So make sure uh, it's a silent killer for a reason. Uh, they say silent because you can have high blood pressure and not know it. It's, everyone knows that for the most part. But here's the tip, all right? If you're a big guy with a big arm, all right, these are like 19, 20 inch arms or some shit, you know. It's gonna drive you mad if you use a normal blood pressure cuff. You want an extra large cuff, okay? Because the smaller cuffs are gonna measure higher and it's gonna freak you the fuck out and increase your blood pressure even more. Or an appropriate size one. Or an appropriate size one. There's one all the bodybuilders use. I use the same one. Sorry, I can't think off the top of my head, but it's like 120 bucks on Amazon. It's not cheap, but it's worth the money because the peace of mind it gives you when you actually get an accurate measurement that's a little bit lower than what you think uh, it is based on all the other ones being wrong, it's gonna make you feel so good. You can't put a price on that. The best way to do that is first thing in the morning, once, uh, ooh, daily, shoot, that's right. That, that is the best frequently <laughs> frequency. I do it about once a week though. <laughs> what? Yeah, because I don't like to look at my blood pressure that much. I have a family history of it, but mine's under control. I think taking your blood pressure can kind of slow down my morning. At least it does, because you have to sit there for five minutes, relax, seated, same position. I mean, Chris Tuttle has, has pulled all these studies out and he's confirmed with me. Even your feet position, like whether they're crossed or not, how far up on a table your arm is, like all these little things can change your blood pressure measurement. So make sure that's exactly the same even more consistent of a setup than your physique check-ins. I like to sit there and get everything positioned correctly like I am in the kitchen. I sit there, I breathe for five minutes, I time it, I close my eyes, and then I take the measurement. I wait a couple uh, minutes, I take another one, and there we go. The blood pressure is usually under 130 and usually under 80 in the bottom number. Other things to track, body temperature, sleep, moon phases, mood, Journal your thoughts. I don't know. There's a lot of other things to track that are worth tracking and are fun to track. Hey, maybe your workouts. I didn't even mention that in this video, did I? Sam, is there anything else that I'm forgetting? Probably a lot. There's a lot of things you can track. There are, but I think you covered the most important ones. I think yeah. I covered the ones that you're going to need if you're going to have to make a major transformation. Or statement. even if you want to hire a coach, because that might be. And if you need a coach or want to hire a coach, even if you don't need one because some people want help when they don't need it and some people need help when they don't want it and some people don't need know they need in any case the common denominator here is you need to have baseline measurements that you've tracked so make sure you're tracking something anything because it's better than nothing thanks guys hit the thumbs up on this video if you didn't do it the first time i said it and check you later